Good morning, Jubilee. Good morning. Well, it is a good morning. And so I really do thank the Lord. It's a joy to be able to uh, be here. And uh, it's amazing how there are so many statements that you usually make, and this means so much more in moments like this. Would you please turn your Bible to the book of 1 Timothy, and I'm going to read from chapter 2. 1 Timothy. I'm going to read from chapter 2, and from the first verse, it says, First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. And this is good. And it is pleasing in the sight of God our Savior who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. And everybody said, well, um, before I come to share a few things from the word this morning, I want to just say one or two things uh, in light of everything that is happening Um everywhere in light of the epidemic, the virus epidemic that is going around. And although you wouldn't know so much about it um, from the television screens and the news reels and so on, nonetheless, I want to, uh, just for avoidance of doubt, there could be one or two people who will just say, what exactly is going on? I don't know. So I want to just take a few moments to touch on some basic things and then to see how we move on as a church together. Uh, it is a virus started uh, in China uh, end of last year, December 31st. In January, the whole thing got picked up. Uh, it is an epidemic situation. It's all over. It's in different nations. It's gone all, all around the world. Uh, the coronavirus is, um, uh, it is very infectious. And it is, has been labeled by the WHO, the World Health Organization, not just initially as an epidemic, but now as a pandemic, so that it is everywhere. It spreads rapidly. It is highly infectious. And now the epicenter is moved from where it first began in China, and now they see Europe is now the epicenter. What that just means is that Europe is the place on earth where you might say it's the, the heart of the infection is, uh, is coming from. Uh, whoever would thought such a thing. It makes me feel like church uh, nations in Africa are going to want to ban flights going to Africa, how things have changed. But nonetheless, um, um, it is the primary place where it's coming from is Europe. Uh, Italy has had a really particularly bad time, and it has been locked down in um, pretty much the whole nation has been locked down, and people not able to go out and come as they normally would. As regards the symptoms of the virus, it's, the basic ones are a cough, a continuous cough. It is uh, a fever, a raised temperature. It is a shortness of breath. As regards those who are particularly at risk, it is the elderly, uh, I guess people in the kind of 70 year bracket, give a little, take a little, uh, those with pre-existing health uh, issues in their lives, and particularly those with respiratory kind of difficulties, respiratory, respiratory arrest syndromes and so on. But also those at risk are health workers of which we have so many here in our church. On the other side of all of that are those who are in the younger age bracket who seem to be either on either immune to it or are just asymptomatic, just don't seem to show any or much symptoms, and even if they did, they tend to come right through it pretty okay. As regards the government's response, it's initially sought to just contain it, whoever has it, just quarantine them a little bit, but it's moved from containing it now to actually seeking to delay its full effect. Viruses, wherever they happen, 
particularly in epidemics like this, they will go up to a high phase and then begin to tail off. And so there I plan, I think, for the government has been to just delay as much as possible. Why? Well, if it's in the summer months, then it just means they can handle things better. It helps plan a little bit more. It helps optimize all your resources and so on. The advice for you and I is when it comes to coughing and sneezing and so on, you know, seek to use uh, tissues, not so much handkerchiefs. I have seen handkerchiefs that are overly used. You don't want to do that. You want to use tissues and use it once and then get rid of it. As I said with the NHS, catch it and then bin it and then wash your hands. The washing of the hands is, to, is really important, important. So when it comes to avoiding catching it, for you to wash your hands in hot water and so for 20 seconds. Who knew 20 seconds would be so long? But it takes 20 seconds and uh, well, the, do what we are being advised to do and it's just wise. Also, refrain from handshakes. Also, refrain from the hugs and the cases that we do all over. It's almost like saying refrain from church life. Uh, but these are counsel and wise that we respond to them. And then there's something later on. They haven't said much about close proximity, but I'm sure it will come to be able to just be aware of proximity to people. In the event that you are feeling unwell, then the advice is that you self-isolate. You're going to self-isolation, you take yourself out and basically be at home for the duration of that time. For about seven days, usually it passes on and uh, or until you are feeling well. If you haven't done, um, um, uh, if you haven't, to this, if you feel that you have it, you know, I already said to some of the people, you know what, be careful, stay home. In fact, I found a number of people to some of those in that age bracket and I encourage them to stay, to stay home. What the government has not done, however, it, it hasn't canceled gatherings to this point. What it hasn't done, it hasn't announced a lockdown. What it hasn't done, it hasn't suggested that everyone stock up on food quickly. What it hasn't done, it hasn't closed down schools. It, the government has not said any of those things. For us as a church, we seek to keep an eye on what we are being recommended to do so that we keep in line with the law. It's the right thing to do. So we're going to follow all of that thing that they say. For us, we're keeping our eye on Public Health England and everything that gets published there so that we are up to par. Uh, last week, Pastor Dave was... Uh, uh, in City Hall in London with the mayor's office where they were giving certain advice and counsel and also taking advice and counsel. And in fact, one of the statements made there was, look, for now, can we just say, please continue to do what you are doing? It was a meeting with faith groups. Please continue to do what you do, uh, which was exactly the, the advice that came out from the COBRA meeting with the government. And so it is that we have a duty of care to you. We have a duty of care to each other, frankly, because and, and, to our, and to our community. And so uh, that's why immediately we began to have a feel for where this is going for us as a nation. We sought, we sought to communicate with you, uh, with the whole church. We did it by website, we did it by text, we did it by app, and then increasingly also will be by social media. Uh, uh, if well, I, I did call a number of people, like I said earlier on, to just check on them, and that's the kind of thing that all of us should be doing. So there's some that have been checked on by phone and have been advised not to come. Let me just say thank you, however, for the way that you have been calm, the way that people have been responsive. Particularly, we had a prayer meeting last Friday, and people were just listening and responsive as we prayed into the into the situation. And that was, uh, and, and again, just like this morning, in a sense, life carrying on as we take counsel and, and advice. And let us keep doing that, being a people in unity, responsive to leadership guidelines. Um, uh, it's the right thing to do. And it's the right thing to do, particularly as we go forward. Because what you do need to know is that we are not yet at the peak of the epidemic. We're not yet at that peak yet, at least in this nation. And the government has not therefore said much more than it did last week. But I fully expect, as most people do, that come next week the government will make some more 
uh, announcements in this regard. I expect that the government will seek to limit the numbers when it comes to gatherings. And this, everybody needs to listen up so that we all are on the same page. If the government limits the gatherings to 1,000 people, then we believe that Jubilee Church, as it is, will be fine. Jubilee Church would green all of you that you will be fine there because of your numbers. Jubilee Church Ilford, you will be fine because of your numbers. And even Jubilee Church Enfield will be fine. We don't gather more than 1,000 in any one of the services and so we would be fine. If the government limits it to 500 people, Jubilee Church Wood Green would be fine. Jubilee Church Ilford would be fine. <laughs> it was all going well. <laughs> but actually, Jubilee, if they take it to 500, then Jubilee Church Enfield would very likely be fine. Let me tell you why. There is no one auditorium. Jubilee Church Enfield meets in multiple auditoriums, okay? So particularly for those of you in Woodgreen and, Enfield, and Ilford, you might not know, I am never standing in front of Jubilee people, or hardly ever, of, I'm preaching to more than 350 people in any one go. We don't have any auditorium that takes 500 people. Everyone are in pockets of 300, 300, right across that way. And so if the government limits it to 500, we very likely would be fine. I'm saying very likely because it won't just be a matter of the government. You need to know that it's also an issue with the cinema uh, and so what they want to do. And that goes also for Wood Green Church. We meet in cinemas. But I think that if the government takes it to, uh, to 500, we probably would be fine. We'd have to take some measures even in that because we would want to go over and above in what is necessary. In other words, if we did go on to meet, if the cap is 500 and we went on to meet, we would, the services would probably be a little bit shorter, the, and then we would stagger people in the exit. One screen goes out front, then the other screen, then the other screen, then the other screen, so that we never really have any 500 people at any one time. The teas and the coffees, which I know is why some of you come, would have to be reduced. I'm just joking. So I've spoken about 1,000, spoken about 500. Let me say something about should the government limit it to 100 people or even less? If the government limits it to 100 people, we will comply, obviously, and everything then goes into small groups. Everything goes into, into small groups. Uh, we would stream the services live, and uh, people would be able to watch it on the YouTube platform, on the, make it available on the website, and even on the app, you'd be able to catch it there also. But I do want to say this. That as a church, by the grace of God, we are so well and so rightly placed for things like this. We really are. Because we never were a Sunday, Sunday concert church. The life of the church was always in the small group. So we don't find ourselves groping for anything. We're a church of small groups. We are a very mobile church. We don't have no permanent fixtures anywhere. We are nimble. Everything we do, we use videos a lot. To so use videos in small groups is nothing new. We've been doing that. We did last week or the week before even. And so on. we have teams. So we're not suddenly scrambling to form groups and say, all of you living in this area, go here, all of you. No, no. Everything is completely calm. We communicate with the church regularly and so people know where things are at. and as a church you are a responsive people so by the grace of God we are rightly placed and the Lord has brought this far and we will do well as we go forward in Jesus name please can you shout amen to that yeah. and so in the end it may be that the church expression may change on Sundays but it will be church anyway no matter where it is. And, you know, for me as a pastor, am I worried or am I concerned, you know, what will happen to you? No, I am not worried. First of all, the church is not mine. It belongs to the head of the church, Jesus Christ. And he is so able to take care of his own house. Can you shout a mentor? So, yeah, I, 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 I am not worried about his church. That would be rude. He is very capable of taking care of his own church. What I am, though, is I am hungry in the name of the Lord that the church of Jesus Christ becomes what it was always supposed to be, that we not be people who hide away in times like this, but we be people who stand in the gap, people who make a stand and stand in the gap, because I believe that that is what the Lord would want us to do. And with all of that, I want to speak to you, therefore, about standing. 
about standing in a time, in a time like this. And the first thing I want to say to that effect is this. As we may be scattered everywhere, as we may go everywhere, as we may, next Sunday we may be here, or next Sunday we may not be here. We want to plan for what if we are not here. Number one, I want to say this to you. Do not neglect meeting together. Even though it's broken down into smaller groups, do not neglect meeting together. Now, I'm sure everything I've been saying, we may not be here next week, they may not be here. There's got to be somebody there saying, whoa. You mean I can sleep in? I knew something good would come from this virus. I knew Jesus is Lord. I knew he's in charge. And we're going to sleep. <laughs> I want to say this to you. Do not neglect gather, being with one another. Amen? Amen? Don't neglect it. Don't neglect it. This is the point at which for you as a Christian, you grow up. You grow up. They're not, you're not spoon-fed everything. It's the time to grow. Do not neglect it. The funny thing, I was, every, anytime I'm away, I try to not miss Sundays. I'll, do, I'll get on any flight to get back on a Sunday. But every so often, I can't quite do that. And I'm always amazed when I miss one Sunday, how far removed I feel. How much it, it feels like I missed like a month. I only missed one. I've ended up thinking, you know, is there anything I miss? Is there anything going on? Is there, it, just, just to miss one Sunday. I want to say to you, and, and I think the thing with that is I, I can, you can almost feel a little out of step with everything. Because when you're in step, you almost don't notice it anymore. And it takes care of you and you take care of others and a sense of belonging is in your spirit and in your soul. But when you get out of step, you can just lose that walk of being in unity with the body of Christ I want to say this to you, beware, beware neglecting gathering together. Because you see, the Bible knows nothing of solo Christianity. Solo Christianity is a foreign concept to the Bible. Not just that. Solo Christianity leads to, leads to isolated Christians. And isolated Christians become very vulnerable Christians. They become vulnerable to the enemy, vulnerable to disappointment, vulnerable to discouragement, vulnerable to depression, vulnerable to the devil, vulnerable. You become vulnerable. This is important because as the church may scatter, it may not, but it may. You need to know that it's a time for you to grow up. Do not forsake gathering with one another. The mark of Christians in the New Testament, is one of the main marks was this. They met together. They prayed together. They worshipped together. In fact, in Acts chapter 2, they lived together. They shared in common together. And so they gathered together to honor God and to take care of one another. And so as we may scatter, I want to encourage you, do not forsake the assembling together. Why do we come together? For encouragement, for prayer, that we may walk by faith and not by sight. Amen? It takes... It, it takes you know, you don't get to just walk by faith just by doing Christianity by yourself. You need your brothers and your sisters. And so 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7 tells us that we walk by faith and not by sight. We need to be those kinds of people. The book of Hebrews summarizes all of this in uh, chapter 10 verse 25. That says, do not, not neglecting meeting together as is the habit of some. But instead, be encouraging one another even as you see that the day is near. In that, in that context, it was talking about the day of the Lord coming. But there's a sense in which, look, the peak of this thing has not yet hit. And so I want to say this, be together, be together. Particularly, as you see, there are situations changing. Be together, not just for yourself, but for others. And so whatever shape services may take, whether it's Sundays, next week, Mother's Day, we will be here or not. I don't know. But whatever shape it takes, whether it's Sunday gatherings or mid or mid-sized groups or small groups or just being at home online and watching online, make sure that you are involved in the life of the church. Because even, even online, I love it when I, I was away someplace and I was, I was locked in during 21 days uh, on the worship, on the prayer meeting. And just to see people commenting, saying online, commenting, saying good things saying godly things, saying righteous things, saying encouraging things to one another. Even then, there can still be a virtual community that happens. We have been called to be people that stand in the gap. The first point I'm making to you is this. Don't neglect gathering together. We will not neglect gathering together in Jesus. Can you say amen to that? 
Number two, reach out in love. This is... This is a time to reach out in love. As nations are closing, each, being closed off, as borders are being closed, as flights are being canceled, and everyone is kind of gridlocked to where they are. If the government announces it next week, schools may get closed, restaurants get closed, shops may get closed. And life, routine life as you know it may suddenly change. And it may be like that for a while is the point. It may not, but it may be. The Bible will say this to you and I, that this is an opportunity to reach out to people. To reach out in kindness, to reach out in generosity, to reach out in care, to reach out with good works, which God prepared for us in the past. To reach out with good works, that we be people who are are quick to help wherever it is needed. I'm so glad that we contacted the counselor and the council and the and different sides of the community to let them know that we as a church are good to go to help in any way. Just let us know how we can help. And when Pastor Dave wrote that letter to one of the key counselors that wrote back to say, you're the first ones to contact us to say, actually, how can we help you? And that's 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 the that's the way we're going to turn this thing around. It's where we're going to invest. It's how the church of Jesus Christ should be known. The food bank I hear, food banks all around are being depleted of food and so on. We, we will make sure as best we can by the grace of God to replenish it. Many of the people who serve there are slightly in the older age bracket. We are going to be ready to serve people. We're going to be those who stand in the gap, who go out there. The Christian kitchen that we spoke about not so long ago. There's some place somehow that you can help and you can serve because God has called you to be a sent one. To be a sent one. So the opportunities are there. Opportunities ready to help, ready to serve our community. I think it's important for you to know this, that we let them know we're good to go and ready to serve our community. Just as we did during the riot times. Again, we shall do it. I love when Grenfell happened. Uh, the, you remember everything that happened there with Grenfell? Well, the church that was near that place became the center from which so much good was being poured out. That's how Christians should be known. We must not be known as people who gather together in buildings, shut the door, and in the name of prayer, don't care about the world. We actually must be people who are spilled out. And this is not just for young people. It's for everybody. Spill out. Serve. In whatever way that you can. Even if it's just small things. In Galatians chapter 6 verses 9 to 10 the Bible says. Do not be wary in doing good. Because in due season you will reap the reward. Jesus Christ in Luke chapter 10 he said this. Therefore that I'm sending you. And so the Bible says he sent them out. Two by two. He sent them. You are a sent person. I saw somebody wearing the t-shirt today. I thought, oh, I should have worn my own t-shirt. It's the time for you to get the t-shirt. And and if just to remind yourself and to let people, you've been sent in the name of the Lord to go where Jesus wants his hands and his feet to be represented. Just uh, a couple of days ago, driving home, and uh, there's an older lady on my street, and she's standing by a car. uh, And she's standing there, and the car isn't open. Nothing seems to. So I stopped my car. And I drove back a little bit open. I went to say to her, are, are you okay? Do you need any help? She says, oh, no, I'm fine. Thank you. you know, and then she said, you stopped for me? I said, yes. I said, yeah, I just thought, oh, she says, I'm waiting for Jane. And I, I, know, I know that car. I know them a little bit. I waved to them on my street. She said, I'm looking for Jane. I went, ah, oh, that's her name. I wrote it down, Jane. But I've always wanted to invite Jane to Mother's. She's a single mom. I've always wanted to invite Jane to Mother's uh, Day. In fact, I think I did once. She couldn't come. And, uh, you know, in fact, one year I put a card on her car and I just wrote Mom of the Year and I just put it there on her car. You know, because she's got two sons and she's trying to do it. She doesn't, she didn't know I did all of that, you know. And uh, to, so I found out her name for the first time. It was her grandmother standing there. She said, you, st- you stopped for me? I said, yes. She said, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. Just imagine the door that was open. For that, I was good to go to invite her to Mother's Day. So this, we better be here because I haven't invested it. In her mind. <laughs> but the point is this: the Bible says for you and I to do good. In fact, it says this: Galatians chapter ten, chapter six, verse ten. It says, you know, do good to everybody, especially those of the household of God. 
In other words, we do not forget one another. We do it to all people. It's to your neighbor. It's to your work colleagues. It's to your acquaintances. It is even to strangers. It is a time to not just buy extra for yourself, but to buy for others next door. It is a time for you to share with other people. It is a time for you to check up on others. It is a time for you to recognize because they have kids and the kids are not going to school, the organization of the day or of their life may be a little disrupted. How can I help? I love what one Catholic priest wrote, and I really believe it. The fact that there will be self-isolation doesn't mean there has to be loneliness. This fact that there is panic buying doesn't mean there has to be meanness. The fact that there is uncertainty doesn't mean there has to be confusion. And the fact that we may not have Sunday gatherings doesn't mean there won't be church. It's just that the church is spilled onto the streets and doing what Jesus always intended it to do. And so I'm saying this, do not neglect gathering together. Secondly, I'm saying you must reach out. Don't just say our church is doing you. You particularly with your neighbor next door. You know the one that doesn't like you? That neighbor is the one I'm talking about. The one that you, you don't really like? That one. The time for you to flip things around and go just reach out. I, I just wanted to check. You guys okay? Because I heard the government is closed, everything down. Just want to check. You guys okay? They'll say, yeah, we're okay. They may even say, of course we're okay. Go away. <laughs> well, you didn't, go, you didn't go there to be nice so you can get a kiss. Your reward is not on the earth. You're going as one sent. And the one who sent you knew it would be like that sometimes. When he sent Jeremiah, he said to Jeremiah, go to these people. Jeremiah said, okay, I will go. And then God said, just so you know, they won't listen to you when you go. To which you want to say, well, why are we going then? <laughs> well, we're going because the Lord said, go. That's why we go. So I expect that sometimes it won't work. The point is, you've done what the Lord called you to do. Do not neglect gathering together. Be sure to reach out. And thirdly, preach the word. You know, the church being scattered, this is not a new thing. This is not, this church being scattered is not, in fact, maybe I'm the only pastor around the world. I'm, I'm half hoping that it just shut the whole thing so that we can be scattered. Yeah, I, I, because the church was never a Sunday, Sunday deal. It just wasn't supposed to be that way. And so the church being scattered has often happened through the ages. It's just that in the past and in the biblical time, they got scattered by persecutions. Now we get scattered by infection. But the point is, no matter how you're being scattered, there must be incarnation. You must take Jesus wherever you go. Jesus wherever you go. In the book of Acts in chapter 8, the Bible says this. And so during persecution, and the church was scattered throughout the region of Judea and Samaria. They were scattered everywhere. By the way, except the apostles. To which you think, oh, it's okay for some. Oh, no. The apostles stayed behind where everyone got scattered right throughout the whole region. It means the Lord never wanted them to just stay in one place. He scattered them all, all everywhere. On purpose, so that the apostles who were there, so they were sending, they were, so preaching was still going on, leading was still going on, guidance was still going on, letters were still being written to educate and to encourage and to speak to the people. That's how the church was. It was small groups all over the place. It's why they said you have filled Jerusalem with the word of God. That's how the church was. But what I love is this. The Bible says in Acts 8 verse 3, and those who were being scattered... He said this, and they went about preaching the word. So they went from receivers of sermons to dispensers of truth. It was a change. So don't, 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 you know, you probably think, oh, wow, I couldn't do what he does, stand there preaching like that. Nobody asked me to do that. You're just saying the moment will come as you befriend somebody for you to say, well, you know, I was just praying this morning because I'm a, I'm a Christian, and I just, you know, can I pray for you about that? Or, well, you know, the way I handle it. You just, you find something in your story that connects with their story, and an open door comes, and you just slowly walk in. Don't badger them. Don't say to them, you know, uh, here in the office, I just felt that, uh, could you all sit down? Bring out the pulpit. (laughs) Not helpful. (laughs) You want to do it with wisdom. Bible says, and so they were preaching. For me, the call on my life, and now the call on your life is this. Preach the word. 
preach the word in season and out of season. Now, what do you think that means? In season, when it's all good and cozy, we got lights and we got flashy stuff. And when we don't, you still preach the word. And but, but when we say the word, you mean Christ. No matter what it is you're saying, you've got to get all the way to Jesus there. That's who we are. We all, people have tendency. In moments like this, we get to know which kind of Christian we really are. Because there's going to be a tendency for some in their mind immediately thinking, how do we move back? How do we draw back? How do we lock up? Lock up, lock up my children. Me, 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 my children. Me, us, us. That, you know, these neighbors, they're, they're going to infect us. They're going to infect us. These neighbors, I can see their eyes. See their eyes. They're going to infect us. Let me ask you something. If Jesus were physically here right now as your pastor, if Jesus were here, what would he say to you? Would he be saying to you, play it safe? Go in and lock your doors. Would he be saying that? Or would he be saying to you, lay down your life? Would he be saying to you, mind the gap? Or would he be saying to you, be the bridge over the gap? Christianity is not just a way of life. It's also a way of death. In case you didn't know what it is you joined, you joined one who the head of it died on a bloodstained cross. But on the third day, he rose again. The way to gain your life is to lose it. If you're in your life, you never do something. You never step out. No matter how small it is, you just become a consumer Christian. And at some point, God himself makes sure you never get anything to consume. It's a different, this is an opportunity for the church of Jesus Christ. This is where I live in my spirit. To say, Lord Jesus, make us the real thing, the authentic church. We have been called to lay, that's my challenge to you, Jubilee. Lay down your life for the person next door, the neighbor, the Muslim one, the Hindu one, who doesn't want to hear about Christ. Is, is that very one that you want to love, love, love all the way into the kingdom and it may take forever. Do not neglect gathering together. Be sure to reach out in love and be sure to preach the word as the Lord gives you. The opportunity. When you read the book of Acts where it says, and they were scattered. And then the Bible begins to just catalog the lives of some of them. One of them was Philip. He says, and Philip went out. He went down to, I think it was Samaria. And he went down into the city. And he, he went around preaching the word. He was an evangelist. Who knew? Who knew that he was an evangelist? I mean, up to this point, we didn't know he was an evangelist. It's almost like as he began to do it, he began to say, oh, maybe this is my calling. And so there he is. And not just is he evangelizing, miracles are happening. It turns out what the Lord said, go therefore into all the world and make disciples of all of, the, all of that. And then he said, and then I will be with you. He is the miracle worker, not you. If, if, if you have never as a Christian said to somebody, can I just pray for you about that? Then maybe you're not the giant Christian you think you are. If you've never said that. This is the time to say that. And the Bible says Philip went around preaching and miracles and deliverance were happening. And then the Bible says this. And because they were spread out like that and because they went out preaching, he says, and so there was joy in the city. There was joy in the city. In other words, God really did have the, he had the city in mind. He had the people in mind. As they did, so shall we do. And everybody said, would you all stand up, everybody? I'm really wanting us to close a little early today because even if we get to million 500 and so on, I still think that we want to close a little early. And so this begins to mimic that. The service today is actually being we're streaming this particular one today just to get all the kinks out of the system and all of that so it's been streamed so that from next week our services will be streamed will be available and uh, you'll get links to it but it will be on YouTube and whatever other platforms we can put it up on there will be links on your app and so on your small group is the place you want you want to think it clearly for one or two of you, maybe just one or two who haven't been to your small groups often recently, you're thinking, eee, <laughs> oh, ah, how will they receive me? <laughs> they will receive you with love. Yeah? 
because they're Christians, they will receive, they will say, come, come. No, they won't, no, they won't. They're going to love you and receive you well. There's an interesting story in the book of Numbers. The children of Israel had misbehaved as they often did. And God was so angry at them. And he allowed a plague to come their way. Not saying this is that, but, but, but there's something about this story that is important. And a plague was coming their way the, in, into the camp. And as the plague was coming, it was ravishing people. People were dying. They were dying. Just, you can just imagine the picture that this conjures up. That line by line, they had just been taken out. And Moses saw this. And he says to Aaron, his assistant, run into the camp and get the censer. Get the censer. And put the incense on the censer. And then run all the way right through the camp. Run, get the censer, put incense in it, and begin to run. So as he's running, the smoke will have been coming off of the, um, the incense. And he's running all the way, just run the whole length of the whole camp. That is not a small distance. And Aaron responded. And as he ran right through, as the plague is coming, Aaron runs right through. And exactly where he had run, where the incense is, the Bible says, and so the plague there, it stopped. And so the plague stopped. He stood between the dead and the living, and the plague stopped. Worship. Don't ever leave it behind. Hands lifted up. Nobody's going to ban the lifting up of your hands. More than ever, these things, they're not calisthenics. They're critical. It's worship. Don't let that go away from you. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? Don't let it go away. Because there's a way to stop everything that is negative. Because our weapons are not of this world. They are spiritual weapons. And we have a good God. And we're not fighting just for our house. We're fighting for our city. Can you shout amen to that? But I love, I love the way it's written there. Would you put that back up that last slide? Because what it says is this. It says, and he stood. Who is the he there? Who? He said, and he stood. This is Moses. This is Aaron. This is, he stood in the middle of them. It says he stood in the middle of the living and the dead you have a choice to either stand in the gap or decide i just want to hide my life away i'm trying i'm begging you beyond all that is going on now i'm just teaching you from the bible you are called to give lay down your life for the cause of christ because that is the way you will gain it and your family and your children and the city that's why you're alive to stand in the gap and so by the grace of God, we will stand in the gap. We will honor everyone. Would you lift up your hand? I'm going to lead you right now in a prayer meeting. We're going to pray for the next five minutes or so. Go on, lift up your voice. Jubilee, you can pray. You can pray.